Hello, and welcome back to Undying. We are in a precarious situation. I'll just warn you, it's probably not going to end with us beating the game. <laughs> <coughs> I think we all know that at this point. <coughs> right. Uh, we'll need the power on for this. Um... 6% of the basic meal, 80, 90, 100% of the basic meal, ah, so that's worth 20%, they're worth 10, right, When they say decent amount of food, do they just mean that I get more, like, I, I'm thinking that it's going to make, for example, okay, I've got a decent amount of food. Does it mean just each ingredient contributes more, or does it mean that, for example, I just can make those recipes, like the soups and things at home? I'm not certain. I, I don't know what it means. With that, <laughs> I'd like it explained, and I don't think it's going to get explained. Right. <coughs> the annoying thing is, I'm going to feel bad for it. But uh, we're going to have to eat that in front of Cody. Because if we don't, we will die. <coughs> um, kind of our last hope here <coughs> is that. Essentially, um, we're hoping that uh, Cody. By the way, can I? I'm carrying that around with the fishing rod, like I'm, you know, like an idiot here. I'm like, does it not attach? Like, how how do I get the bait onto the rod? I don't know. Right. Because there wasn't an option to, you know, use the bait at the fishing spot, nor was there a option to... Maybe I click on here instead? No, drop, drop. Do I just... Maybe if I drag them onto each other with the mouse? No. No idea. We'll dismantle this. Get some shabby clothes. We've actually finally got a decent amount of cloth. Um, I think, yeah, we've got a lot of herbs here. We, theoretically, we could, I guess. Um, we might be able to make something with those. Possibly. Right, let's see what we've got. <coughs> Herbal tea reduces the duration of a specific symptom. Ground herbs. Okay. So we can heal a bit. But not very much. Right. 
I believe we were also wanting cloth or something, oh yeah, well, it was the fishing rod. Which we may want to quickly repair. I also wanted some lock picks, didn't I? Might have to consider some. Um, right. Let's um let's make a few cloth strips. <coughs> right, we've got a few bits of cloth. We might be able to actually heal a little bit. Okay. <coughs> and look at Cody making stuff. Go, Cody, go! Right. Oh, we get four. So we get two per. Okay. We are holding steady. We're no longer on the brink of death. We are just about clinging on. Like a particularly stubborn turd that refuses to drop off the, your backside. We are clinging on to dear life. Um, we'll keep that on because there are mushrooms in the fridge. And if we get a single mushroom more... We will be able to uh, make a stew. Now, we'll head to the downtown district. It's marked as safe, which means that there are very few, if, if not any, zombies at all. <coughs> he says the zombie immediately <coughs> runs toward him. Quickly go for. That's a zombie. Go it. Don't stand next to the zombie. Oh god, damn it! Not that these things are overpowered, but it did just take off half of my health. In a single... In fact, no, it's nearly killed me. Oh, Co <laughs> Cody is actually dead. Hey, look, I found the mushrooms. <laughs> so the tooltip lied. It is not safe here at all. Um, on a plus note, because we might as well just do a bit of scouting while we wait for Cody to just eventually give us a game <laughs> over here yeah on a plus note there's definitely a bunch of food here like that oh rush to Cody <laughs> and we go really slow oh my god there's even a rabbit if we can actually get to here we could get more food and we might Dare I say, we might. There's the distinct possibility that we live for maybe two more days, I would guess, on that <laughs> amount of food. <laughs> Problem is, as well, is now the cough isn't that big of a deal. <laughs> But it does make a stealth approach practically impossible.
Gun guy, run. You've just fired. Stop shooting the gun. Right, let's, let's go to the back. Maybe if we just keep hitting him, we'll like chain stun him, perhaps. Okay, Cody. God sake, right. The one thing I hate as well is that when you're trying to comfort Cody, it's the same button to interact with things. So, it just won't know what you're trying to get him to do. Um. an axe then we can just chop the tree. I wonder if that's more efficient or something. <laughs> Got him. But yeah, this is a genuinely huge amount of resources. We might like I said, we might manage to live a little bit longer because of this. But I wouldn't hold my breath on us like lasting the rest of the game or anything. We are We are severely screwed here. Get him, Cody. Get him. Right, that is a meat stew, a mushroom stew, <coughs> ah, if we didn't scare that bird, if we wait a moment it might come back, yep, worth it. Has everything just respawned over here? I'm fairly certain it has. I think that's what's caused all of this. I think everything's just respawned. If I remember correctly as well, when you go over to talk to them, they're straight up just bandits. So they won't talk to you, they're just marked as hostile. Right. Now we just have to make it out of here. But yeah, four meat. Ooh. This is going to be pretty good. Right. We will cook. One. <coughs> as much as I'd love to get that crow and get another bit of meat, we have to fight for it. <coughs> yeah, that wasn't exactly quiet, was it? <laughs> So I'm wondering if if things have respawned here, like the enemies and that. I mean, it's worth a look, but no, the loot has not. I mean, I know it sounds like a daft concept, but I, I know that some games, I think like if you go on a Bethesda RPG, like Fallout or Skyrim or something, They'll just straight up respawn um, certain areas of the map. 
after like a month of in-game time or so. Right. Getting a bit hungry. Now it takes no time to run home. So time won't have actually passed there. We nearly have enough mushrooms for two mushroom stews. However, we do not have the water for two mushroom <coughs> stews. <coughs> and therein lies the question. Where or where can we obtain water? Because that is pretty much the single thing that is absolutely, completely and utterly screwing us right now. I really wish you could make more rain collectors or something. You know, apologies if there's something I've missed and you're screaming at the screen right now, but I I don't see how to collect additional Getting water at the hungry. moment reliably, other than those faucets that we've repaired, and it's just so slow. Let's do this again. Hmm. Nope. <coughs> Try again. There we go. Yes. <coughs> so, literally, as we are about to die getting a bit um, hungry food and starvation and things again we can attempt to go i'm trying to remember if they had mushrooms here we see two groups of people confronting each other is it zombies versus survivors or are they all survivors and bandits and things and we're going to get murderized getting a bit hungry <laughs> Oh, for God's sake. <coughs> You're weak and we should and should obey our orders. Hand over your stuff. We won't yield to bandits. We will not succumb to evil. You'll need a lesson. I will bring justice. <coughs> Run! <laughs> They all immediately punch Cody in the face. <coughs> oh, we can't go around there. I right? have to go all the way back around here. Um, Afro dude. Surprisingly easier than the zombies. Or not. <coughs> <laughs> Literally runs over, murders, murders a mother and a child. Don't worry, he's the good guy. <laughs> we are gonna have to pretend that didn't happen, or we are literally gonna have to end the series. <laughs> oh, right. I am very glad I did a safety save. This is what I mean, though. We we are one mistake from death at this point. Just a little thing like that. I mean, I say a little thing. That would put it major. But anything like that and we're dead. Getting a bit hungry. I press street instead of map. God damn it. Getting a bit hungry. <laughs> we're getting a bit hungry. <laughs> no S. Literally <laughs> starving to death. You want to quietly think for a while, you stop and rest. I'm guessing this I'm I'm sure this is because we've probably run out of food and water, so we're just stopping every time. <laughs> some kind of encounter. Oh, 
Okay. <coughs> For some reason, this guy is just here. Okay, we've discovered something. Um, all the zombies here are super duper aggressive. Like, hyper aggressive. Um, is there any way that we can leave, or do we just go out the way we came in? Yeah, let's not stay there for any length of time. It's poisonous. There's monsters everywhere, and the zombies are extraordinarily aggressive. Diana! I think I remember last time we were trying to get her med kit and no one would accept the med kit. That's how I remember that being. Last I checked. Um. Also, out of curiosity, right, so nothing has spawned here. There are no <laughs> mushrooms, there are no, I was going to say, I can't remember if there ever were mushrooms here. And also poison fog. Right, being here is a bad idea. Can't even go near them. Kill it! Kill it! Funnily enough, I'm healing from this. That's really cheesy. <laughs> So I've just discovered a way to heal for free. Okay. That is interesting. Oh, it's doing that again. I'm sure that's just like the controller being plug plugged in. I clicked on the mouse and it centered on the middle of the screen. Oh dear. May menu, let's just stick to the mouse for a moment because the, the user interface on this really disagree, just disagrees entirely with the controller. It really hates it. Right. Getting a bit hungry. Getting a bit hungry. Okay. So let's just go over what we know. This is covered in poisonous fog and will kill us. If we go to one of those plants, we'll weirdly enough, like, survive. Um, National Park, we've taken everything we can. The farm doesn't have any water marked there, which means it's not rained, which means there's no uh, crops that have grown. The supermarket doesn't have anything good. Um... We can go here and hope that there's water. Someone's calling for help. Getting a bit hungry. <coughs> we are going to die. <coughs> Please help me escape. I'm really scared. I don't know what to do. Follow me. <coughs> Here's the plan. Oh my god, she's blocking me. She's body blocking me. <coughs> she's gonna kill me. I can't get past. <coughs> the 
good news is that they're distracted by her. It wouldn't be bad if she was actually hurting them. Thank you. We get four wooden <laughs> planks. Also, by the way, our son is dying. <laughs> oh no. That's a failed attempt if I've ever seen one. I mean, once again, we can just go and randomly, like. Oh, mind you, we can't heal from that camera because, yeah, we have to do it while we're in a, what's it, madness state, don't we? Right. I think, I think at this point, yeah. I think at this point I'm going to admit defeat, I think. I'll pause it so I don't have to hiss listen to her coughing all the time. Jesus Christ, that gets annoying quick. Um, it's alright, I think, as a game. You know, I've... I saw it... I, I played the demo. I think it might actually be up on the channel, the Steam Next Fest demo. And it seemed alright, but very rough around the edges. And I waited until the end of early access to buy it, so that I wouldn't have to play it with all the rough edges. Um, it still really has rough edges. Certain things just aren't, uh, aren't explained at all. Um, certain things, you, you know, you kind of have to read through this tech tree to really know exactly what you should be doing and aiming for, because you want to get Cody to be able to do certain tasks and that like. You don't even realise, like, oh, I have to go and create, like, a net and go and cast nets out to teach him how to fish with a pole, apparently. And, yeah, and you, you at the beginning of the game, I was wondering why Cody couldn't actually uh, shoot anything. And it's like, well, it's because you have to go and have him break several objects. And the easiest way to do it, obviously, is to just repair the uh, target in the back garden. Right, OK, but... <laughs> so there's a whole thing with that, and... By the time you've found your footing, I'm finding that, at least I've found on my playthrough, by the time you've really found your footing and you know what you're doing, the game has already, like, the zombies have outpaced you. I cannot help but think that this is almost designed to be played several times, and that you might get it on, like, your third or fourth go and get to the end. I mean, it's one way to design it, but the, the problem is with that is that's usually the sort of design that you would put into, like, a roguelike or something. And I can't help but think, you know, especially with, like, the randomised encounters on the map, if maybe this was originally intended to be a bit more of a roguelike, survival-esque thing. Um, but... Yeah, the, the problem with that is it's all right for a roguelike where the playthroughs might be an hour or two tops. But having to go and redo an entire run that could be, you know, over 20 hours is a bit much. It's a bit overzealous as well. We, yeah, we're making you go and re, replay content and that. It's, again, I, and I've not placed it on a particularly high difficulty. It plays a lot like, I would say, Project Zomboid crossed with The Last of Us. And I think that was the intention. I think that's what they're going for. But it doesn't really achieve either. Uh, it's got a lot of the mechanics that you would expect in something like Project Zomboid and, and other survival games and that. But it doesn't have like the sandbox and the freedom of Project Zomboid. Like on Project Zomboid, if I want to... I'm fairly certain you can build rain catchers eventually on that. So that when the rain goes out, you can still um, you can still collect water. But on here, I'm limited to one. On Project Zomboid, we've been this big open world survival crafting thing. You you can just build a bunch, you know. Oh, I need food. Oh well, you have to build a farm. Yeah, Project Zomboid, you 
wall off an entire section of the map and just have as many damn crops as you like and you're sorted for food you know you don't you're not limited to only two two or three places that you can scavenge from you can keep unlocking more and more as you go through and you're not relying on these little randomized randomly generated points of interest that are usually full of hostiles so there's there's definitely something to be said with the the way that it kind of plays i think the the best way i would put it is it feels like they originally intended it to be a full-on survival game but then they've tried to turn it into like a narrative thing it's it's like they were planning project zomboid or something similar but they wanted this whole last of us style storyline going off you know where it's like you and your kid and you're looking after them and training them and I would like to have, I'd, I'd like to have actually seen where it goes in the end because I'm curious but I might just have to look it up or something but um the issue with uh, the the issue I'm finding with that with um yeah with with this whole thing they're doing like the, the it's just like the how to phrase it yeah i'd say that it's, it's trying to tell you this story but this because it's still at heart a survival game first and foremost the survival mechanics are very severe right so it completely gets in the way of everything and you feel like you're being choked and you can't breathe while you're playing the game the survival mechanics completely get in the way of completing the game you're constantly having to juggle them and spin plates and that whilst trying to further this narrative and you just can't um I, I would probably if i were going to play it again i'd probably just turn the survival mechanics down to the minimum the the main issue with the survival mechanics though because like it's got all the components there but i think the economy is just off balance like the biggest problem is water it's the single largest problem like i say you can't build additional rain collectors nor can you just upgrade the one in the back to be bigger or something and it constantly wants you to use your uh your precious water to water crops to make food so it's like right you can have more food but it'll use your water up it's like well okay but i still need the water to not die <laughs> so it's like right it's kind of like yeah the, the issue is that your two most precious resources one can be exchanged for the other so you can exchange water for food basically there um but while you can yeah while, while you can exchange water for food um both of those re resources are extremely precious you know it's you should be able to exchange something that isn't incredibly precious for food for water usually this would come as something like you would beat an area on the map and you would obtain some kind of permanent upgrade that will lessen the effects of these survival mechanics for, for example what if we went and did the, down, the downtown area we got to that repair shop or something and there was like a massive um what's it um <clears throat> Yeah, if if we just had in, we found in the back, um, some kind of massive tarpaulin or something, which was a key ingredient that we needed to create an enormous rain collector, like a super upgrade to it. You know, or you went down there and there was a shop that sold, I don't know, swimming pools. Yeah. So you went down and there's just a shop there that sold swimming pools. And it just so happens that someone were loading one onto a trailer out back. You know, they'd just bought one, they'd loaded it onto a trailer, and you go in, you unhitch the trailer, and you take it away with you, you know. Just plays a little cutscene once you've beaten the area. You interact with the trailer, and you shows a cutscene of you driving off with it, done. You set it up in the back garden, basically negates the whole barely getting by for... Uh, water uh, mechanics right 
because that's what a lot of a lot of the other survival mechan uh, survival games tend to do this it's difficult to survive at first but then once you've found your feet and you've established your base you typically will become really powerful you know you, you'll focus your focus shifts from okay i'm just trying to not die to okay i've now got a farm i've now got me <laughs> i've now got an infinite water source practically and i'm now no longer dying the survival mechanics just become more of a side thing you might even get to the point where they become like ways of gaining buffs a brilliant example would be honestly both minecraft or don't starve or something very familiar with don't starve myself but yeah it's don't starve brilliant example you start at the beginning you're just eating whatever probably just loads and loads of berries but by the end you've got your base you've got a bunch of farms you've probably got um you've probably got a sustainable source of meat that you can use either be it be it uh, pigs or spider dens or whatever and you're throwing it on the crock pot and you're no longer just making meatballs to give you as much hunger as possible but you're cooking items that give you massive healing bonuses or improve abilities and things yeah i think there's mods out there that you can get which allow you to have like recipes that give your characters buffs and stuff uh, for a while and so it becomes like that um but yeah the the biggest problem here is with that survival economy and the biggest part the biggest issue with it is the water because the water is random i wouldn't mind it being random if say for example there was a bit of code in the background that was just saying okay if it hasn't rained in an area that has a well for at least like three days it'll just rain there all day something like that just to prevent the game from essentially going you know what we're just not going to rain for like a week and completely start and just cause a drought that com completely just kills off the player because that's kind of what we were facing there none of the areas with uh with water collectors or wells and things uh, got rained on the entire time for a few days and we just we just died from first that's basically what's happened here a uh, combination of that and the zombies just getting tougher all the time which i genuinely hate i hate the idea of the zombies like power scaling as time goes by usually you would just introduce new enemies but no they're increasing the uh, abilities of the basic ones so you can't really you're not really getting more powerful as the game goes by you feel like you're trying to you're trying to outpace the zombies and race them you know to beat the campaign so not overly fond of that there's other stuff i mean I've ne i'm never fond of timed quests and things and some of the quests just didn't let me complete them the one with diana i did have a med kit i did go to her i went to that other last and neither of them would accept it i don't know if there was a time limit if there is it should tell me at least please please alert me to the fact that there's a time on these things because most games don't do that so it takes you back you know it kind of takes you back when they do um but yeah i think as well with the randomized weather i hate the poison fog just why i Ugh, awful idea. But other than that, the the other thing I would say is, and and this is the other thing, it's the combat is kind of, I mean, ass is probably the word. It's kind of ass. I mean, I can show it off. You know, you you get your <coughs> weapon out, you charge it. It's all right. But as I've mentioned, there's an issue where just before it's like a millisecond window. <coughs> Not quite there. Uh, yeah. I've seen it happen once or twice. I think that might have been it then. Where you swing, it's technically not. You can see it better with the bat because when she does a full swing with the bat, she does two hand she two hands it. But you can see kind of like there that last one the icon for the charge attack was full 
but she still one hand swings it. There's like a weird millisecond timer because you're looking at, and I've I've been looking at the aiming well the little uh, icon that shows that it's a charged hit, whereas what you should be looking for is when you actually see her do it, when it is actually charged, so little stars come off her. <laughs> That's the full swing. <coughs> um, the other problem with the combat, I'll have to be quick because we're about to die, is you can aim with the right stick. It's a twin stick uh, combat game, which is good. That's exactly how it should be from this top-down perspective. The problem is, is if you start moving that stick beforehand... <coughs> you get that weird command thing for Cody and you'll have noticed in the combat I'm constantly like giving Cody loads of different orders not uh, not on purpose it's because I'll have probably started aiming before I've started holding down the attack button you know it's it's like yeah the trigger is on a spring load thing you know on controller you're probably going to end up moving the analog which has less resistance to it faster than you're going to end up pressing down on the trigger button even though you're moving both at the same time so you end up just ordering cody around and then you're having to like reset his orders that he's got because he's uh because all uh, because you've just told him to do something completely different and yeah so you're having to like reset the orders while you're trying to fight something and you can sometimes accidentally tell him to just like stand around and he'll just stand in front of enemies <laughs> because you've accidentally been trying to aim at something with your weapon. It's a bit awkward to say the least. It's that and just other problems with controller where it just in the user interface just does not work most of the time. The skills are kind of cool. I like a good skill tree and it's nice that you have to do these challenges for it. And the randomised little things that you get on the advanced side over here are quite cool. But the problem is, is the ones in the extra randomised ones that you get, each level and that, are so minimal in their effectiveness. You have to get like five levels to actually get a decent uh, power up. It's a bit ridiculous, and there's there's the books you can read, but uh, it just. I think my general consensus of this game is that there are a lot of good ideas. Like, don't get me wrong, all of these things are good ideas, like survival mechanics. You've got someone you have to protect. You've got. It's not just you leveling your character up. You're leveling your ward up. You know. The whole point is you have a ward and you have to level your ward up before you perish. It's a very good idea. I really like it. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of things I like. The survival mechanics, again, they have everything you would want. It's just poorly executed. And I think that's, generally speaking, a lot of the problems of the game. It's got everything you would want from this style of, ga of game. If you were to cross... Project Zomboid and Undying. Uh, sorry, if you're to cross Project Zomboid and The Last of Us uh, with each other, if you're to cross those two games, this is pretty much what you would expect. But you would want it to be far more polished, fleshed out, and way less janky. And I think that's pretty much what's held it back. I think it would need a rebalance of the economy or things explaining better so you make fewer mistakes early on maybe a better tutorialize uh, tutorialization to it or something um i would definitely say that as you go through the survival mechanics should become much easier but um that and you should become more powerful like, i don't feel like i can even attempt to get to the final crafting things and don't even get me started with trying to trade for stuff like you want anything from any NPCs. You know, they want like one of your severed limbs as payment. Um, but I feel like you should, by this point, I should be running around with like an arsenal of weapons just blasting things. However, I feel like there should be, you know, 
I should go into a fight and there'd be ten zombies run at me instead of just one or two at this point. You know? And ones were like, ah. <clears throat> and yeah, they should have, like, armour and, you know, guns and stuff. And the, the guy with the gun, by the way, it's not crazy unfair that the zombie has a gun. I remember seeing it in uh, one of my favourite zombie games, actually. Uh, De yeah, well, Dead Nation. That's what it was. By House Marquee. Absolutely fantastic game. They had a uh, they had a zombie cop and a zombie and an upgrade version of him, which was zombie uh, army guy. You could shoot the cop while he was running towards you, and it would because uh, obviously you had to. You were gonna you know you want to kill him, but it would trigger him to start uh, firing the gun as he ran at you. It's like shooting him. He stops for a moment, and then his gun starts going off when he starts running again, as if shooting him made him clench his hand or something. So then he starts running at you with gunfire, and it just randomly fires bullets everywhere. Does nowhere near as much damage. And it's one of these games where there's like a billion zombies on the screen, <laughs> and you're just mowing them down. But very cool idea for an enemy. And the upgraded version of the military zombie, obviously bulletproof vest way tougher helmet on so when you first shoot him he can resist a headshot initially and and if he's if his goes, gun goes off it's like an assault rifle or something so but yeah <laughs> but yeah overall i like it i like the survival mechanics i like the idea of coding that i think the stuff that you can get him to do and the the fact you have to train him all very good, like, there's good ideas and concepts here, but I think it's just not quite up to snuff for me to keep playing through it. But I hope you've enjoyed the saves up to this point. I'm, I'm going to be ending it here, though. I don't think there's a way we can actually survive. I think we've essentially soft-locked the game. I don't think there's a route out of here where we survive, unfortunately. Even if we get more food, we haven't got more water, and... We're rolling dice as to whether we can get any. And we're running... This is the other thing that's weird as well. Normally in survival games, it becomes easier to survive. <laughs> and you get tougher and more powerful. But the enemies get stronger as you go further away from like the initial area that you're starting. From your base and that. Usually how they work. But with this, it's like, again, it's it gets harder to survive. So I think if we look at our status here, I think we've got one, haven't we? Um, no, there's one where it's... Um, yeah, well, this one. Uh, every decline ex event we experience, the rate of hunger and thirst are increased by one. Every time we use medication to cure a symptom, we'll randomly restore hunger or thirst by ten. Honestly, that's probably what we've been getting screwed by this whole time. It doesn't sound too bad when you read it. But <laughs> when you start adding it up and stuff, and it's like, yeah. Because we got that kind of midway through, so... Every decline event, so I'm guessing that means one, two, three, four. I'm guessing that means we're taking, we use up four more thirst and hunger per hour, I think. I think that's what it means. Um, see, that's the other thing as well. I'm not entirely certain sometimes what these mean. And I don't know if it's because of the translation. Because I think that obviously this is definitely a game made by people who are non-English speakers. Um... Well, not the first language, at least. But I think, yeah, it's it's just not really properly explained, some of these. Sometimes it's told you that you get plus to certain, pluses to certain attributes when it actually means minuses. I remember at one point it was saying when we're going to get plus so much help, uh, hunger an hour, but hunger would uh, uh, go... I think, like, the max hunger was down or something, or something on those lines, but... Yeah, it was a complete lie. We just starved. They'd put a plus instead of minus somewhere. 
Anyway, I think I've finished my rant just about. Oh, it's it's one of them. I I, I want to like the game, but I don't think I can. <laughs> Unfortunately. <coughs> Thank you very much, though. <coughs> Angling doesn't feel so good. <laughs> we'll go and round it all off finally. Thank you very much for watching. <coughs> this has been... God, we've got those in the back garden now. This has been Undying. And unfortunately, we have died. God, and even in the back garden now, you get those glowing-eyed mega zombies. I, th I think it's poisonous fog here as well. I like just... Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Few uh few things probably coming up on the channel if you're interested. I believe at the moment there is there'll be Pacific Drive. I have been absolutely smashing that game. I don't know what it is about it. I just really, really like playing it a lot. <laughs> it's just it's just a nice chill game to play really. But yeah, that's going on until I think early April. Possibly even mid April I've just got onto the second zone at the time of recording. Pacific Drive will be, yeah, that's going to go on for a good few weeks. I've got loads of episodes in the can. Um, Hell Divers probably going on for a little bit longer until we just we're hitting a bit of a wall at difficulty seven. I think we might be able to beat it if we're lucky and get the right kind of missions to roll, and we're a bit lucky with what spawns on the map. And we're a bit more organised, but I think we probably need a fourth if we're going to truly beat it. But we might wait until some premium war bonds come out, get some new DLC content going, and we might be able to retry it once they've added. I believe mechs are coming to the game. I mean, I know they've teased them, so there's been loads of leaks about them and things I've been trying to stay away from. Though, to be honest, I've played the first one, so I know what, like, three or four of the mech variants already are, uh, most likely, but probably more. There might be a little break with Helldivers, but then more to come later um, when the uh, new content gets released. In addition, then there will be... I think we're probably rounding off Deep Rock Galactic at this point by the time this goes up. But at the end of the month, there will be Dragon's Dogma 2, of course. And then there's something called Outpost Infinity Siege that I'm uh, hoping to give a try. So we'll see how that goes. Thank you very much for watching. Again, I'm a, I apologise that it was bi a bit of a anticlimactic end. We just kind of sputtered out. It is one of those games where if you've made a mistake... It's not a mistake you've made now, it's a mistake you made 10 days prior, and you're now paying for it. So you can't really, even though I've tried to leapfrog my save games over each other in case such a thing happened, you know, that we can roll it back a few days to try and make up for it. I, I think genuinely, if I were to watch back through the footage, like the mistakes were probably in the early game, where we were just struggling in the first few, probably for the first week or two we were struggling. We should have cleared the supermarket and downtown a lot faster. We should have gone to the survivors camp a lot faster. And we definitely should have... Um, I think, yeah, just generally speaking, we should have explored more and got Cody uh, helping us in combat a lot quicker and we would have probably been able to make it through the game then. That, I think that's the problem. You you are really fighting like in a race against the zombies. It's like an arms race. Because they become stronger. And that's the problem. You know, you, you don't get to a point where you are just ploughing through them. You're always kind of clawing against it. Which, you know, I mean, it's, I guess it's just a design decision. But, yeah, the problem is when you fall, back, when you fall behind a little bit, you're probably screwed. So, it makes it for, in all honesty, yeah, you... Odds are you probably will end up having an ending similar to this unless you know what you're doing, which probably you'll get from having a playthrough or two. Anyway, 
I'll see you though for, again, there's all that on the channel. I hope you've enjoyed the series. And I'll see you in future videos. I'll see you then.